A Book of God's Word, Chapter 18 I who am also spake to Zarathustra the all-pure, saying, Explain these things to my people, for they shall not dwell in darkness nor in fear. Zarathustra said, What shall I teach them, O Iho Mazda? 2. Iho Mazda said, My people are united. My people are delivered out of the evil city. To themselves, of themselves, and by themselves, have I delivered them as a separate people. 3. I found an easy way to unite them. I went not by a dark road. This is no miracle, but the manifestation of faith in the all light. 4. Take them further away from Oaz, far away in the forest, and since Asha is an old man, and learned above all other men, he shall be the Arabah over them. 5. Ihwa Mazda said, but as for thee, O Zarathustra, thou art young and strong. Thou shalt choose fifty men from amongst my people, well learned and strong, full of vigor, and they shall be thy companions. And thou shalt visit the large cities of Japheth and Shem and Ham. For four years shalt thou travel, delivering the Zarathustrian law. But at the end of the time thou shalt return to Oaz, and to this people my first chosen. 6. And behold, after that, Asha shall go with thee to Oaz, and thou shalt raise thy hand against the city, and it shall fall. 7. Zarathustra then explained these things to the people, and thereafter took them to the valley of Yanshe, by the river Wichowich, and he divided them into three large cities and four small ones, and after the manner of the Ihans, the sacred people, white and yellow. 8. And he gave them fathers, rabbis, and made Asha chief father over all others. Thus was founded the Zarathustrian religion, the Iowa Mazdian law, the Ormazdian law, the Zarathustrian law. 9. And Zarathustra chose fifty men, well learned and vigorous, not old, and they departed to establish the Zarathustrian laws in the cities of the east and south. Iwamaza led them forth, speaking to Zarathustra the All-Pure, telling him whither to go, and directing him in the nearest roads, over the mountains and plains, and across the rivers. And wheresoever they went, Iwamaza provided them with beasts of burden and beasts to ride, converting their owners to Ormazdian law, who gave them all things required. 10. The first large city Zarathustra came to was Setgau, on the plains of Doab, high-walled with wood and stone, and when he came to the gate thereof, the keeper demanded his name and business, speaking in another language, and Zarathustra understood him not. Then came Iwa Mazda, answering the keeper in his own tongue, saying, 11. I am a servant of the Creator Ormazd. I come to prove immortal life before the King. Send then to thy King, and he will admit me and my people. So the keeper sent to the King, who commanded that Zarathustra come before him. 12. And when he and his attendants were thus before the King, the King said, Art thou he of whom the King of the Sun hath spoken? And what is thy business with me? Thy King even the king of kings, is mad. Then answered Iwa Mazda, saying, 13. Zarathustra, of whom the sun king spake, is before thee. I am here to prove to thee many things pertaining to what is written in the book of holies. But ere I utter many words, I pray thee that thy son, Hasing, and thy wife, Hittias, and thy daughters, Piyudu, Zu, Hain, and Zabi, be also present. 14. The king said, How knowest thou the names of my people? And Iwa Mazda said, Here stand guardian spirits, Ashars, and they speak to me. Chief amongst them is Aye, thy grandfather, who slew himself, and next to him are thy kinspeople in spirit. Noah, Wes, Lut, Ganse, Mithse, Nimok, Wohoen, Rooks, and Patsu. 
15. The king was concerned, for many of these had been slain in wars, nor knew he how Zarathustra discovered their names. So he sent for his wife and son and daughters, and they all went into an inner chamber, Zarathustra with them. Then spake Ihomazda to the king, saying, 16. Think not that Asha is mad because he hath given up all he had done, and gone to live with the poor. The gods call all men mad who do otherwise, especially rich men, and kings, and rulers. For such men set value on things that they cannot retain, but during earth life at most. Asha setteth value on that which will last for ever. I would that all men would do as Asha hath done. 17. Because of unbelief in the great spirit, man hath set himself up as the all-highest, and his trade hath become war and destruction. I came not to persuade thee to give away thy kingdom, nor thy riches, nor yet for any glory or profit to myself. I speak for the host being slain, tribe against tribe, city against city. I speak for the millions of spirits in darkness who dwell on the battlefields. 18. Ihua Mazda thus gained the attention of the king, and, meanwhile, the angels who accompany him took on forms, looking like mortals, and presently the king and his family looked about and saw them, and were frightened, and the king drew his sword, saying, Who have entered thus uncalled? But as he advanced, behold, the spirits disappeared. The king was amazed. Ihua Mazda continued, saying, 19. Concern not thyself, because the spirits show themselves. Neither call thou these appearances miracles. Spirits are always present. But because they thus clothe themselves with corporeal parts, thou hast for the first time seen them. Whilst thou was quiet, they came. With thy sudden passion, they disappeared. 20. The king said, Will they come again? Then answered Ihua Mazda, saying, since thy wife and thy daughters are frightened, why should they appear again? Yet hear thou me, O king, since thy youth up thou hast been prepared for this. Thy wife is half-breed with the Ihans, the sacred people. The Ihans were preserved by the gods to this end, for they are as the leaven, prepared for the resurrection of all the races of men. Because of this great virtue in thy wife, the spirits of the dead can show themselves before thee. 21. Whilst Ihuamazza thus spake, the angels again assumed Sargas, and there were present several spirits whose mortal lives had been cut short by the king's own sword. Chief of these was Awitakiatha, one-time king of the city of Segao. 22. The Sargas spake to the king, saying, Think not that I am dead, O king. I am not dead, save in the corporeal part. As by thy sword thou did cut me off, so by the sword shalt thou be pierced through. Next spake to Sain, another Sargas, saying, Till thou art dead, O king, and thy soul cast into hell, I will not cease to torment thee. Next spake Gon, another Sargas, saying, Before yesterday I brought venom from rotten flesh and inoculated thee in the breath of thy mouth. Thou shalt cough blood and foul-smelling corruption. Next spake Aud, saying, I am come from the land of the dead, O king, with the torments of hell for thee. Then spake, was saying, a Sargas saying, I am thy first wife. Why slewest thou me? Was not the world wide enough? 23. Thus the spirits continued to speak, suffered by Ayahuamasa to manifest their evil desires and passions, in their own way, nor did one spirit appear who had a single good word of cheer for the king. Then the king spake, saying, 24. Go away, spirits or devils, I will see no more. And with that he swung his sword about fiercely. But when he quieted a little, Ihuamaza spake to him, saying, 25. I declare to thee, O king, the air is filled with the spirits of the dead, and because they were slain by thee, they lie in wait for thy soul, when thou shalt die. Think not that by slaying a man thou art rid of him. Only the corporeal part is within thy power. The soul never dieth. 
Ormazd is just. Whom thou hast injured, thou shalt restore. 26. The king said, If a man be a bad man, and I killed him, is it not a great good? Ahuamaz said, To kill him is a great evil. Thou shouldest convert him to good. The king said, But if he belong to me? Then Ahuamaz said, No man belongeth to thee. The same creator created all men. From him are all men created, and they belong to him. 27. The king said, But I have possession of them. They are mine. If that creator is stronger than I, let him take them. Ihua Mazda said, To take them from thee would be no honor, but for thou to deliver them is thine own honor. 28. Now whilst the king's mind was thus engaged, the angels fell to work to demonstrate their presence and power in some unusual way. And, accordingly, they cut loose the tapestry about the walls, and let it fall to the floor, and with great explosion. The queen and her daughters rose up and fled. 29. The, the king was angered, and thrust his sword at Zarathustra. But, lo, it broke into a hundred pieces, and yet no part touched Zarathustra. Ahuamazah said, Save thou repent of thy evil ways. I will withdraw my holy angels from this house, and thou shalt bear witness that ere the morning sun appears, this place shall not be left standing. 30. But the king was hardened. So when Ahuamazda perceived there was no repentance in the king, he withdrew the Lord and his Ashars, abandoning the palace to evil spirits. But he sent guardian spirits to inspire the queen and her daughters to flee from the house that night, and they so fled. And the spirits of darkness went to the king's enemies and inspired them to go against the palace, and they so went and destroyed it. 31. The next day Zarathustra went about in the city, which was in great tumult, and Ahuamaza spake through him and to the people. And in one day he received more than a thousand followers, and when the king saw this, he decreed Zarathustra to death, offering a reward to whoever would slay him. 32. The next day he preached again before the people, and received great addition to his followers, and then the king ordered his soldiers, of whom there were ten thousand, to fall upon Zarathustra and his people, and destroy them. But Ahuamasta had prophesied this to his adherents beforehand, and had advised them to flee, and many escaped before morning, but there were also many who were still within the walls when the soldiers came upon them. 33. Ahuamaza stretched his hand upward, saying, Fire of thy fire, O father, give me here a wall of fire. And there rose up a wall of fire betwixt them and the soldiers. And the latter, seeing this, turned and fled, crying out, Shri, Shri, signifying spirit. 34. Thus Zarathustra led them out of the city, and not one man or woman or child was injured. But it came to pass that the deeds done through Zarathustra were greatly exaggerated in relating them, so that people who had not yet seen him believed the world was about to come to an end. 35. Thus the king lost all discipline over the city, and the people lived without law or order, robbing one another or destroying whatever stood before them. Chapter 19. 1. Zarathustra called his fifty companions before him, saying, Because these people are delivered from the tyrant, they will become his enemies. A people long oppressed love vengeance. This would thwart the Ormazian law. Take them, therefore, away from the city, dividing them into groups amongst yourselves, and I will send angels capable of interpreting languages. 2. Iowa Mazda said, Behold, a god cometh not to accomplish at random, nor cometh he to one man only, in order to overthrow the evil of a whole world. Ye have been prepared for this work since the day of your birth. My angels have been with you, and ye are a part of my army. Now this shall happen to you, after ye have divided these people, and conducted them into the forest. Ye shall begin to speak with new tongues, and these people will understand you. And ye shall build altars of worship to Ormaz, teaching these people songs and prayers and dancing, explaining to them the Ormazdian law. 3. Zarathustra said, 
Wait not for me to come, nor for the voice of Iwa Mazda, but do ye in faith as I have commanded, and the voice will be with you. 4. So those who fled from the anarchy of the city were led away, half a day's journey, and then encamped. And the companions of Zarathustra, who were styled Inquas, were entranced, and comprehended the language of the people, and could talk with them understandingly. 5. So they built altars to Ormazd, and taught the people worship, and caused them to take an oath not to kill any man or woman or child, nor beast, nor bird, nor any animal created alive. And they bound them on the oath taken under the thigh, to eat only fruit and nuts and roots and bread, according to the Ormazdian law. And they divided them into families of tens and families of hundreds and of thousands, giving them one rabbi for each, according to the Zarathustrian law. 6. But Zarathustra returned into the city, and Iho Mazda clothed them about with fire, at night and with clouds and daylight, so that the people could behold his power, and no man dare raise a hand against him. 7. Then he commanded the people to gather together all the skulls on the walls, and the scops that were hung about the houses, and on the poles, and they were taken away and burned. And as for the soldiers, he disbanded them, and thus the king was rendered helpless, left to stroll about cursing. 8. And Zarathustra advised the people to go out of the city and live, and they so went forth by thousands, beginning new lives. And after that Zarathustra left the place, and at once it was filled with Drujas, and they went to the Druks and inspired them to fire and plunder. And it came to pass, in not many days the great city of Tsetgao, with all its temples and towers and palaces, was reduced to a heap of ashes. 9. Zarathustra went before the people, hundreds and thousands of them, speaking by the voice of Ihwa Mazda, saying, I hear certain ones saying, Whoever setteth value on earthly things above heavenly things, it is good for him to have fire and destruction. All things come of the Father or Mazd, or by his permission. When he withdraweth his hand from a wicked city, evil spirits rush in. 10. Ye have said, Who are evil spirits? Why doth not Ormaz destroy them? I say unto you, Evil spirits are both yourselves and the dead, whom ye have slain in passion, still live to torment you in spirit. Ye had their skulls hung on the gates and walls. Your temples of science were portaled with the scalps of your enemies. The spirits of these people still live, though their bodies be dead, and they obsess you to deeds of wickedness. 11. This is the Ormazdian law. When a man is dead, ye shall either burn the body, or bury it in the ground, that the spirit be not troubled. But ye bound them in spirit. Sit Gao was an eyesore in the sight of them that were slain for its glory. They delighted to see it destroyed. 12. More than ye have lost by the fire, these spirits have gained tenfold. For now the gods can deliver them in heaven. For which reasons I declare unto you that it is a great good that Set Gao is destroyed. The world is large, the lands are very wide. Kill no man, nor woman, nor child. They are Ormaz. 13. Neither shall ye build large cities, they are a curse on the face of the earth. Neither shall ye live alone, for such become bound to self, but dwell in families of tens and hundreds and thousands. Hath not the Father given you an example in the Ihens? They kill not, nor take that which is another's, nor are given to lust, nor war, nor quarrelsomeness. 14. The voice said, Where is the king's wife, Hittias? Where is Hasing, the prince, and the princesses, Pentu and Zu, and Haying and Zabi? The multitude answered, They are gone. 15. After that the voice said, I say unto you, They were gone, but they are returning. Presently they will be here. They shall speak before you, and sure enough, presently the king's wife and sons and daughters came. Hittias said, Behold, Sigal of Oas is burned. Who hath seen the king? Hain and Zabi, the princesses, were very young girls, and they cried for their father. 
he had slain himself, cutting his bowels across with his sword. 16. Ahimaaz spake to Zarathustra, saying, Come thou, Hittias, and stand on the rock so that all can see, and bring thy children. She came and stood beside Zarathustra. And now the voice said, Let these bear witness whether the dead do not live in spirit. 17. Hittias said, With mine own eyes have I seen the spirits of the dead. With mine own ears heard them talk. My children shall hold up their hands if these things be true. The children held up their hands. Again, Hittias said, Where is my husband, the king? 18. Whilst they were yet standing on the rocks, lo and behold, the ghost of the king rose up before all the people, and Hain and Zabi cried, Here is my father. Then spake Ihwamazah, saying to the soul of the king, Knowest thou that thou art dead? The soul of the king spake loud, so that all could hear him. He said, No, I am not dead, but I have done a foolish thing. I cut my bowels across. 19. Then Hattiah said, I fear indeed the king is dead, and this is his spirit. He looks strangely. Ivamaza said, There is no cut. The belly is unharmed. But the spirit persisted, saying, I thrust my hands in the hole, and yet thou sayest, There is no wound. Thou art mad. I remember thee. It was thou who brought back these phantom enemies to torment me. 20. Ihwamasa said, What enemies seest thou? The spirit answered, All I ever slew, a thousand or more. Away, ye torments, ye mockers, I will thrust you through. 21. The soul of the king then stamped and raved, and he saw the spirits of the dead. But the audience saw them not, though they saw him, for he was in Sargis form. 22. Ihwamasa said, I say unto thee, O king, Thou art dead, and risen from the dead. Couldst thou but awake to this fact, thou wouldst be risen in spirit. Neither canst thou be delivered, till these thy enemies are also delivered. Then answered the spirit of the king, saying, I banish thee from the city of Segau, nor shalt thou ever return, under penalty of death. 23. Ihwamaza said, I tell thee, O king, the city of Segau is destroyed. Verily is there not one house standing in all the place. The soul of the king answered, saying, Thou tormentest me, thou madman, thou assertest lies in the face of the facts. Be gone, wretch, O oh, that my belly were not cut across. I would at thee with vengeance. 24. Ihwamazda withdrew the Sargus, and the king could not be seen. Nevertheless, his spirit continued cursing and raging all the same. The queen, Hattias, comprehended the matter fully, and her heart was heavy with sorrow. 25. Ihwamaza said to her, Remember the faith of thy forefathers, the Ihens. Be thou strong in the Ormazdian law, and these sorrows will pass away. Nor is there anything in heaven or earth can satisfy the soul that is short before the law. To her that can say, I live the all-highest, happiness hath a sure foundation. 26. And whosoever perceiving the dead are in torments, let them pray for them, singing anthems unto the Father. Intercede ye with the all-light, to bestow them with peace. Think not that because of your prayers the all-light runneth with Halma to feed the spirits of the dead. But this I declare unto you, that... By peace and joy in your devotions to the Father, the spirits are thus reclaimed to virtue and exaltations. 27. These things will I show unto you, yet this night, be steadfast and hopeful in faith, and, when the evening hath come, I will again call up the spirits of the dead before you. Chapter 20. Because of the destruction of Segau, there were hundreds of thousands of people rendered homeless and destitute, and groups were surging about in all places, crying out for food or for some needful thing. Ihwamaza said to Zarathustra the All-Pure, The ill fortune of mortals is the good fortune of the righteous gods, but the good fortune of mortals is the glory of the evil gods. 
Think not that because Segau is burned and the people hungry, the voice of the Father is out of place. Now is the time they will give ear. By the loss of earthly treasures, the soul seeketh for that which will endure forever. 2. Go thou therefore, O Zarathustra, and I will go with thee, and choirs shall be sent out, calling the people to the valley of Sokya this night. 3. So it came about, when the night set in, Zarathustra came before the people, and there were tens of thousands of them. Ihwamazah spake to them, explaining the Ormazdian law. 4. When he was done speaking, he took Katayas, the king's widow, her children and forty others, and made a crescent of them, and he stood betwixt the horns thereof. And to his left and right were many of his companions, thus prepared Zarathustra sang a song, such as the Ihans had taught him in his youth. 5. And the Drujas were ushered into the crescent, taken on Sargas, the king amongst the numbers. And the spirits of the king was softened, for they sang peace to his soul and joy forever. And presently he awoke from the craziness and remembered he was dead. And he rejoiced in Zarathustra, and applauded him before all the people. And likewise the spirits of darkness who were with him did in the same manner. 6. Zarathustra said, Behold, I have not come in a dark age. Ye shall not worship any man born of woman, nor call him sacred. One only, who is Ormaz, the Creator, is master over all the world. Hear ye now my voice unto him. 7. Zarathustra stretched his arms upward full of energy, and Ihwamaz spake through him, saying, Light of light, O Father, hear thou thy Son. With thy almighty hands bless thou these faithful sufferers. Hardly had these words been spoken. When there fell from the air above fish and fruit and grains and roots, and all things good to eat, more than sufficient to feed the famished people for three days, and there were more than thirty thousands of them. 8. And all this while the Sargus of the king looked on, and beheld what had been done, and he cried out with a loud voice, Blessed art thou, O Ormazd! O oh, that I had known thee! O oh, that I had sought to find thee! Hittias, my wife, and my blessed babes, swear ye to the king, ye will proclaim the Ihwamazdian law forever. Swear it, give me joy! Swear, swear, swear. 9. Then Hattias and the children held up their hands as directed by Ihwa Mazda, swearing a solemn oath to maintain the love of Ormaz and the Zarathustrian law forever. After these, there came thousands and thousands of others who also swore in the same way. Ihwa Mazda then took away the Sargas, and the spirits could not be seen by mortals.